Hello, so there's been a shocking revelation on the FTJ University. Um, I would like to thank the movie TV and the crew for actually investing time to find out the real truth behind the universities. There was a protest over the same issue led by Chama Fuwe, popular known as Pilato, and they mobilized some youths to actually protest against the corruption, alleged corruption, over the construction of this university. But here is the truth. Before we get into the video, I would just like to say it on record that I think we can do better as a nation to, you know, distance ourselves from propagandas just to label previous government, you know, as corrupt, um, call them names or just paint them black. I think we can do better as a country in order to move forward, to actually work on truth and being sincere with the general public as well as stakeholders. Watch this video and find out the old truth behind the construction of the university. Arriving in Wapula province, the northern part of Zambia, one is expected to cover a distance of about 700 kilometers away from the country's capital city, Lusaka. Critics such as members of the civil society organizations and those in the political space, including government, have alleged that the $33 million was squandered, at the same time accusing the contractor of having disappeared. But our investigations revealed that the contractor has gone nowhere. Also come to our attention that, in fact, government is owing the contractor an amount of about $50 million it was supposed to pay as part of the second advance payment according to this contract. From here, many questions are being asked on whether or not the Zambian government is being sincere on the whereabouts of the contractor when it is a well-registered company with the Chinese government, which the two nations are friends. Why hasn't the Zambian government complained to the Chinese government if it truly these allegations are correct? Or does this crusade only meant to tarnish the image of the contractor? However, an attempt was further made to get the official position from the Minister of Finance on the matter at hand as well as the payment made. Managed to find one of the leading consultants under China Henan Engineering Company, Collings Sitali. In our course of, of investigations, we came across the contract. And uh, also, in this contract, your name has been mentioned as one of the many consultants into the, this project. Can you tell us who Mr. Collins Stali is, the consultant? Thank you very much, uh, Innocent. Indeed, as you have rightly mentioned, my name is Collins Mabuku Stali, and I'm a consulting quantity surveyor and construction cost consultant. Yes, by training, I've got a Bachelor of Science in Building and a Bachelor of Laws degree from the University of Zambia. And I have been in this consulting business for now slightly over 20 years. And so in this particular contract, my role was basically to provide professional expertise regarding the construction cost of the project. We prepared the bills of quantities on which the final cost of the project was best. Can you tell me about uh, your allegiance? Where is your allegiance, for example, you as a consultant, as a profession? Why is your allegiance? Firstly and foremost, uh, it must be clear, innocent, that um, as a professional, I am regulated. And as a professional, I am given a practicing certificate by a professional body. So my allegiance, 100%, lies with my professional body and not with the person who pays my check. So specifically, my allegiance 
is with my professional body and with my integrity. You've talked about your legends. I ask this question deliberately to find out in terms of what you know uh, in the FTJ Chidua University. I want you to explain to me what designing is or what design and build mean. Basically, in, in construction, we have different procurement uh, routes. Design and build is a procurement route or strategy in which the contractor is contracted to provide the design services of the development in question and then go ahead and build the same project. This is as opposed to the traditional system that we all know, where, for instance, a consultant is firstly appointed by the client to design. Thereafter, a contractor is brought on board to do the actual construction. In the traditional method, there's a separation of the two. But in design and build as a procurement strategy, there is a fusion of both the design and construction in one entity. It's for this reason that on this FTJ Chiroba University, the consortium was between the consultant and the contractor because they were one team to do the design and the construction of the university. What, what, what does it mean, advanced payment rather? Generally speaking, an advanced payment is really what it is because it is payment that is given to a contractor to ease his cash flow at the beginning of a particular contract. But I must hasten here, Innocent, to mention that uh, an advance must always be very specific in terms of what it is paid for. And this may differ from one contract to another. Most of the contracts, especially when you are using a traditional uh, approach, like I explained earlier on, where the consultant is different from the contractor, an advance payment for the contractor usually is for the purchase of the construction materials and special equipment that may be required at the beginning of the contract. So, generally speaking, an advance payment is money that is paid in advance, and usually it is interest-free to the contractor to ease his cash flow. On page 101, it says that you were paid a 15% of an advance payment. Would you confirm that, yes, the employer, the government, paid you the 15% advance payment? That is 100% correct, innocent, because the contract, if I take you to page um, 101, it makes reference to clause 14.2, which is the clause that deals with the advance payment. And so, basically on this particular contract, the advance payment was 15% of the contract sum. And we all know that the contract sum was 225 million United States dollars. And if one is to do simple mathematics, you realize that 15% of that amount translates to 33 million 750,000 United States dollars. So contractually, this was what was obligated to be paid by government. And for sure, they met their obligation and paid the advance payment. I was taking you to page 62 because page 62 clarifies in detail the purpose for which the advance payment was paid. I must again take you back to my earlier explanation where I said each contract may have its own requirements and the reason for the payment of the advance payment must differ because advance payment is project specific. In this case, what was the requirement in the contract? The employer shall make an advance payment as an interest-free loan for mobilization and design 
when the contractor submits a guarantee in accordance with this subclause. Now, innocent, the contract was very specific. The payment of the advance was for mobilization and design of the project. So if the contractor hasn't mobilized and hasn't designed, I will agree that he has run away with the money. Let me ask you that question because mm. you are here as a consultant, mm. so you know better. Did you mobilize? Did you do all the designs as stipulated by the, the contract? This was a very big project to begin with by any standards, internationally or locally. This was a very huge project. Designing a university is like designing a small city. And we are talking about two campuses here. The whole design of the project was completed before the contractor moved on site not only completed, but also approved by government. It's only after the design was completed and approved that the contractor mobilized and moved on site and started the works. So yes, the advance payment was for design and mobilization and for sure the consortium designed and mobilized. On site. We found some structures on, on site. There are a syllab and the other foundations. Where, where that, that work part of the, the advance payment? Unfortunately, technically speaking, the answer is no, because the advance payment was for the design and mobilization. And here I must tell you, innocent, that. Uh, like I said, we are talking about designing a very huge project here. The works that you saw on site were not part of the advance payment. There was no advance payment for the works on site. Whatever you saw on site, the contractor did it with his own money. And if people dare to look at the records, they will discover that what the contractor has claimed as work done is commensurate with what you see on site. It has nothing to do with the 33 million. The problem is most people do not appreciate intellectual property. So when they see, when they don't see something, they think it was not done. We must appreciate the value of architects, the value of engineers, the value of construction cost consultants, you see, and the value and the expense that is related to mobilizing on site on such a very huge project. There's a lot of special equipment that is required. And so that's where the advance was used. It has nothing to do with the works that you saw on site. So do you confirm to the people of Zambia that you achieved the obligation as far as design and build is concerned, according to the contract? Hundred percent innocent. If indeed you have carried out your investigations and you have been to site, you can confirm to the Zambian people, not even myself, that the construction had started, that the contractor was indeed on site, and therefore if construction started, it is evidence that the entire design of the university was completed. And also it's evidence that the contractor mobilized on site. So generally speaking, I want to confirm that the designs were completed and the client accepted the designs and gave a go ahead. And the contractor mobilized on site to actually start the works. So this indeed was 100% done. What comes to your mind as a consultant when you hear people talking about the reported stolen money, $33 million, as well as accusing you that you've run away, the contract has run away? What comes in your mind? Innocent, I don't get moved by social media. 
frankly speaking, as a professional, I don't respond to the whims and caprices of social media. You see, while the social media is busy talking about the 33 million, the Ministry of Finance and ourselves as a consortium have been professionally moving forward to see how this whole project can be put together and get completed. The bottom line, and this is what the people may not know, is that government has no money to complete this project. And because they have no money to complete this project and they have categorically stated to us as a consortium that they have no money, we as a consortium made a presentation to the Minister of Finance that we are ready to construct the two campuses as a PPP project, if they agree, using our own resources. Now, if the consortium has run away with 33 million, how come they are committing themselves to complete the project with their own resources as a PPP project? I'm grateful that as a journalist, you decided to investigate this matter. You went to site. You have gone around talking to different stakeholders. And you have finally come to even speak to me so that the truth of this 33 million can come to the fore. If for sure we as a consortium or the contractor ran away with the 33 million, I would be owning a jet by now. I would have a plane. Because that's a lot of money. Thank you very much. I am extremely grateful. And I just want to thank the Minister of Finance for the professionalism that they have displayed and for the ongoing activities between us and them to make sure this matter comes to a logical conclusion. And uh, I must state that as a consortium, we are still determined that the people of Luapula and Northern Province can benefit from this very important uh, project instead of it just evaporating into the air like that. As we conclude our investigations, a number of questions have arisen. And the Zambian people deserve answers to these questions. First and foremost, was there a contract between the Zambian government and the consortium? Our findings have reviewed that a contract does exist between the two parties. The next question that begs an answer is what type of contract is there? It is a design and build type of a contract. Was there any advance payment provided for this contract? The answer is yes. It was a provided for. What was this advance payment for? Our investigations have reviewed that this advance payment was for designs and mobilization. How much was this advance payment? Our investigations have reviewed that it was a $33.75 million for both campuses in Mansa and Kasama. We have further investigated as to whether the designs were done and whether the contractor had mobilized. Again, our investigations have reviewed that, as a matter of fact, the consortium had completed the designs and government had actually approved them and that the contractor had mobilized. Out of these questions and the answers, our investigative team of journalists have further drawn the conclusion that Contrary to social media allegations that the contractor has run away. This is because as late as the 13th and the 15th of June 2022, the government and the consortium had had a series of meetings at Sunday's creation and at the National Construction Council NCC offices. Surprisingly, our investigation team has further found out that the consortium is actually ready to construct the two university campuses using its own money under the public
private partnership model. 